Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to yet another mini Monday. Today I'm going to talk about Linux. I'm going to list out five or six different things that I do when I build a brand new server. So I've just built a brand new Linux server. Now this server is Ubuntu, it's running version 24.04.1, it's the LTS version that's available on their website. This is the version I'm going to use to show you these commands. So generally the first thing I do whenever I build a new server is I want to make sure my network configuration is right. If the network isn't right then you can't do anything so start there. That way if it all goes wrong and you have to rebuild the server then you haven't done anything else and you don't have to waste a whole bunch of time. So the very first thing to do is let's get the network sorted. So let's log into this machine. I've created an account. I'm going to log in here. As soon as I log in, the first thing I can tell is it obviously gives me all this information, but it also tells me what the IP address is of this server. So as we can see, the IP address for this server is 172.16.45.128. And it also gives me the network adapter name, this ENS33. So that's good that it has that there. If you don't have that, you can easily check what the IP address is just by typing in IPA. As you can see here, it also gives me the IP address down here. To check all the network settings on this machine, you can type in the IP route. That will also give you the default gateway, the path that it has to take to get out of this VM to reach other networks. You can see here that that is 172.16.45.2. If you want further information, you could use if config. Now, obviously it's gonna give you this error message if you don't have the net tools installed. I don't have them installed, so let's do that now. Okay, so as you can see, that is the NAT tools installed. Let's run that command again. And you can see the fconfig is actually bringing me back here. It's a little bit more easier to read than the other screen. I like this one. If you want to find out what your DNS servers are, you want to type in cat etc and it's called resolve.conf. And at the bottom of this file, you are going to get your name server, which is your DNS with 172.0.0.53. So the good thing about this server that is it pulled all its network information from a DHCP server. Now in most large organizations, DHCP won't be available in certain networks. Maybe it's a restricted network that doesn't have a DHCP server available. So you will have to configure these network details manually. Now the thing to remember about configuring static IPs on Linux servers is it's all about the spacing in the file. If for some reason you can figure the IP address and it isn't working then it's probably the spacing. So let me show you the file that you need to edit. So if you go to this directory, I type in cd, dc, netplan, and you're going to do an ls there and you're going to see what is there. So obviously you can see there is a file here called 50-cloud-init.yaml. So that's the file we're going to edit. Now if we open that file, you will need to use sudo beforehand. So sudo cat 15 and you hit tab. And as you can see here within this file, it says network, ethernets, ENS33, which is our network adapter. Now to edit this, you can use VI or nano. Personally, I prefer to use nano. So let's do that. So I'm going to do sudo nano and I'm going to type in 50 and I'm going to press tab, not twice, but once and hit enter and this will open the file. Now we can go down here and edit this file. Now, as I said, it's all about the space in here. So let's go down. I'm going to go across to DHCP4 and we're going to turn that off. So delete that, type in no. Because we want to configure these details manually, we need to enter all of these. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to hit spacebar again. I'm going to move over so it's in line with the ENS33. Then I'm going to type in addresses. I'm going to hit colon and then I'm going to hit enter again. I'm going to go all the way across until my cursor is below the A. Then I'm going to hit spacebar twice, hit dash, and then I'm going to type in the IP address. Now I'm not going to save any of these settings, so I'll just put dummy information in here. Put in 192.168.1.10 slash 24. If you want to add comments, you can do the hash and blah, blah, blah. Doesn't really matter, it's just comments. Then we're going to hit enter again. I'm going to go all the way across under the A and type in gateway under colon. I'm going to do 192.168.1.254. Then we'll hit enter again. I'm going to move all the way across again. Let's configure the DNS. So you want to type in name servers. You're going to do colon and I'm going to hit enter again all the way across again. Go all the way across until the cursor is under the N. Hit spacebar twice again. And then we're going to type in addresses again. Hit colon. Another enter, we're going to move all the way across under the A, we're going to hit spacebar twice, 
I'm going to do a dash and then we are going to put in our DNS. Now if you want to do two DNSs you could move all the way across again. 888.4.4. So this is what it should look like. So remember the spaces, the indentation of where things are in this file is important. So if it doesn't work, go back and make sure you follow this. I've spent a lot of time trying to fix network stuff and it ended up being a space. So this stuff is important. Now, once you're finished with this and you're happy with this, hit Control and X. And as you can see in the bottom left hand corner, it says save modified. All I have to do is hit Y and that will save those network settings. If your server already has an IP address and you're connected to the IP address to configure this server and then you go to modify the network details, then we have to restart the services to make them apply. But the key thing is here, if you configure them wrong, then you're probably going to lock yourself out of that server. So just like quadruple check this file before you make these changes. Now, if you've made changes that you want to keep, the next thing you would have to do is obviously restart the network services. And all you have to do is sudo that plan apply hit enter and that will restart your network services and then your server will be configured with that new static IP that you just configured. So now you have your new server configured, it is on the network, it is communicating with the world. You can even test that just by pinging Google. So ping google.com, you can see it is replying. So I know that is connected and that's configured correctly. Generally, the next thing you would do is, let's update this server, sudo apt update, put in my password. That's gonna pull down all the latest updates. Then I'm gonna go sudo apt upgrade. So that is all our updates and upgrades applied. In Linux, it's generally good practice never to log into the server using the root user. The reason for that is the root user is like God mode. You can do absolutely everything with that. And the bad news is, is every single hacker in the world knows that. So you need to protect that root account. Generally, what I do is I create an additional account and I give that pseudo access so it can make elevated permissions that I don't really need the root for. So all we need to do is type in sudo user add and I'm going to give it a name so I'm going to call this one GOB123 is going to be the new user account. Now to set a password for that account sudo pass wd uh, GOB123 so that's the user account that I want to set the password for. I'm going to hit enter it's going to ask me for the new password. I put in a password type it again and done. So that is new account and it's password. Now you can check what groups that user has been added to. By default, it's not added to anything. We want to add that user account to the sudo group so it can make some elevated changes on the server. To do that, all we have to type in sudo user mod a capital G and then I'm going to type in the group sudo and then I want to type in the user account. So one, two, three. So sudo user mod a capital G space then the name of the group space then the name of the user hit enter and then that is it you can check if that has been successful by typing in groups and then the name of the user now you can see that this group is a part of that pseudo group so now you have your user account created and your network stuff you have everything done but one last piece the last piece is to disable root access via ssh you don't want anybody logging into this server using that root account so let's go and modify the ssh settings and then we'll disable remote access into the server using the root account so if you want to go to this directory so cd etc ssh Go in there and it's going to type in ls to see what's there. The file we need to edit is this sshd underscore config. Let's just open that up first. This file's too big so we can't see everything we need on this so let's just open it in nano so sudo nano sshd config and let's go down. This is where it says permit root login prohibited password. We're going to go up we're going to delete out the hash and then we're going to go here type in no and then we're going to delete all the rest of this stuff this is going to stop anybody from logging into this server as the root account to save it just a control x hit y to save and that's pretty much it so if you don't know anything about linux at all then i would highly suggest that you start off by even learning some of the basic commands because learning Linux and understanding Linux is such a key skill to have. The good thing is I created a Linux for beginners video that you can easily follow. I'm gonna link it here. Follow that, have a look. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for being here and watching Mini Monday. If you like the series, you like all of this content, then please subscribe. That would make me very, very happy. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week.